Well, hey there, I'm excited to be able to share another message from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Uh, we've already seen Jesus die and raise again, and he's already appeared to his disciples one time, but today we're going to see he appears to them a second time. And one of the disciples was not with him the first time he appeared. And so this is the first time he's going to see Jesus. And maybe you already know who this is, but yes, it's Thomas. And so if you turn to John chapter 20, we're going to look into just what name Thomas was given. Like he was labeled this for the rest of his life, the poor guy, but he was known as Doubting Thomas. And so we're going to talk about what it means to doubt. And so if you go ahead and turn to John chapter 20, and we're going to be in verse 24, but let's pray as we get started and ask the Lord just to give us wisdom as we study this. And so hopefully our lives would be changed through this and his word today. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for the Bible, your word, your promises to us. Lord, we can trust it. And I pray that if somebody here today uh, doesn't really trust the truth of your word, that they would turn their hearts to be able to believe the, the truth of this word, um, the truth of what is mentioned and shared in the scripture, to understand that truly it is your word to us, to help us live life, to understand what salvation is, to understand who we are compared to you. And we are sinners who struggle but we can be saved by grace through faith. And so teach us what it means to truly believe and not doubt. And so, Lord, we all have doubts in our lives. So would you speak to us where we doubt the most and help us understand that we truly can believe your promises. And so show the, those to us today as we study this. In Jesus' name, amen. So what does it mean to truly doubt. Um, it's simply unbelief. It's unbelief. And we can doubt many things, different types of things in our lives. What Thomas struggled with here was truly believing Jesus and what he said. Jesus shared and said that he was going to die and come back to life. And, and even the disciples told him, hey, we've seen Jesus, as we're going to read, we've seen him, but he's like, I'm not going to believe. I'm not going to believe it. Have you ever heard that phrase, I will not believe it until I see it? Once I see it, then I'll believe it, right? Because that makes sense in our minds. If we see something, well, yeah. Have you ever seen something and you couldn't even believe your own eyes? Like you're seeing something amazing happen in front of your eyes and I don't believe it. Wow! But so many of us have to see something in order to believe it. Well, God has a word for us today. And John writes these words. And there is a special blessing that Jesus shares about you and me. And so let's see this, okay? John chapter 20, verse 24. Let's read this. Thomas was one of the 12 disciples. He was also called Didymus. He was not with the other disciples when Jesus came. So they told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them first, I must see the nail marks in his hands. I must put my finger where the nails were. I must put my hand into his side. Only then will I believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were in the house again. Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus came in and stood among them. Do you remember that last week? We were talking about how all of a sudden Jesus appeared through the locked doors. He had this glorified body and he could just walk through walls. And so he did it again. And I, I just wish I could have been there just to see the disciples' reaction. This time, a second time, they probably were like, look, Jesus, you got to stop doing this. you got to stop showing up like this. You scare us half to death when you just show up like that through the doors because the doors were locked. The disciples were still afraid. What did that share about the disciples? The disciples already saw Jesus alive, yet they were still scared. The doors were locked. They were locked because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders coming to get them. 
Here he shows up again through the locked doors. And what's the first thing he says? The same thing he said before. He's like, my peace, may peace be with you. Whenever he says, my peace be with you, it must not be a very peaceful situation, right? In other words, they were scared. All of a sudden, he just shows up. You ever been scared by somebody? Like, you didn't know they were there, and all of a sudden, they're there. You're like, ah, you know, it gives you a shock. Well, that's what it was like. And he says, may, may peace be with you. And so, verse 27, then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Then he said these four words, stop doubting and believe. So poor Thomas gets this reputation and, and he's known as Doubting Thomas. How would you like that label? For the rest of your life and even after you're dead and gone, you're known as the doubter, the person that didn't believe. But guess what? Thomas changed. Thomas actually took the gospel all the way to India and he shared with the people in India about Jesus Christ and many, many people became believers in Jesus just because he shared the gospel and he said, I witnessed this. And so Thomas really didn't stay a doubter. Now, where are you at today? Do you doubt the Bible, God's word, this whole story about Jesus? Uh, you know, I kind of believe it, but I wasn't there. I didn't see Jesus, so I don't really believe it. Maybe that's you today. Where is your doubt? Well, Jesus looks at Thomas and says, you're seeing this, Thomas. Stop doubting and believe. So the question becomes, where is your doubt? Why do you doubt? The first thing we need to do, if we're going to overcome our doubts in our lives, we need to identify why it is that we doubt. Doubt is unbelief. And the opposite of doubt is belief or faith. So if you want to overcome doubt, you got to have faith. Faith is seeing without believing. Does that make sense? So you're going to have doubts and in order to overcome that, you need a belief, a faith. Well, how do we increase our faith? How do we increase our belief? Well, faith is a lot like a muscle. So if I want my muscle to get real big, right, um, I could lift weights and they get bigger, right? But it would not make sense to just put my arm here and just start doing this. It's empty. It's not going to work this faith muscle very well, right? And so sometimes it's hard. Think We have to go through hard things in our lives, you know, and when we're lifting weights, it's tough to lift that weight. There was a guy that I knew I went to school with when I was young, a young boy, and his name was Ryan. And Ryan, he was always one of the smaller kids. They, they looked at him as weak. Well, I want to show you a picture of Ryan today. Take a look at this picture. Wow. Look at Ryan's arms. Man, guess what? He did not become like that overnight. He worked and worked and exercised and lifted weights. And now I could probably fit inside his arm. His arm is so big. He, he worked out. Right? And faith, faith is the same thing. It's a muscle. And in order to do that, sometimes we have to go through the hard things in life to be able to increase our faith and increase our trust in the Lord. When we go through the hard times and we put our faith in Jesus and we see him come through, that just increases our faith. And so faith is a muscle. But even the Bible says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, it can move mountains. So even a tiny bit of faith and trust in the Lord can do amazing things. So God calls us to have faith. He asks us to increase our faith in him. And so you need to identify. That's the first point of today. First things first, identify where your doubts are. 
How come you don't believe Jesus? How come you don't believe that he can take care of things in the hard times? Why do you not go to scripture to find the promises to overcome your doubts? Where is the source of your doubting? Thomas didn't believe it because he had to see it. Maybe that's you. I won't believe it unless. You ever said those words? I'm not going to believe unless, and fill in the blank, right? Whatever it is. You, you say this statement, I'm not going to believe. I won't believe it until this happens. I know so many people have, who have been in a, a, a terrible situation and they say, Oh God, if you would only get me out of this, I'll believe. I'll turn to you. I'll do this. That's doubting Thomas. I won't do it unless I see it, right? And so here was the source of his doubting. He had to see it. But Jesus gave him a big command to stop doubting and believe. So that's the challenge to you today. Stop doubting and believe. In order to stop doubting, you've got to identify the source of where your doubts come from. All right, let's move on to verse 28. Okay, this is where it gets amazing because Jesus actually says something here about you and me. Watch this. Verse 28, Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. At that point, he believed. He said he wasn't going to believe until he touched the nail prints, his, his side, right? And here was his turning point. Thomas says, my Lord and my God. Have you come to that point and place in your life where you have surrendered and said, okay, I'm going to stop doubting. I'm going to believe. Whatever it is you say, Lord, I'm going to believe it. Jesus, you're Lord of my life, and I surrender. Have you come to that point and place in your life? This was Thomas's turning moment, his repentance moment. He says, my Lord and my God. And then verse 29, this is where Jesus says something about you and me. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still have believed. He was talking about us. He was talking about all the future people who would believe in Christ as Savior and Lord, and they didn't get to see him physically. That's you and me. He said a special blessing to those who will believe yet didn't see. Why? Because it's faith. Faith is believing without seeing. And we, as Christians, we are believing without seeing. So are you one of those? Are you a Christian? Are you? Is your faith in Christ saying, yes, I believe he is the Savior. He is the one that came and died for me and rose again. And he is my Savior. He's my Lord. Have you come to that point in place? Because if you haven't, that blessing's not for you. That blessing is for the ones who have believed without seeing. That was awesome that Jesus in this moment was thinking about us. And so first you have to identify the source of, of your doubts. Like, what doubts do you battle the most? What's the source of those doubts? When, when do you start doubting the most? You gotta identify all those things. But the second thing is, is dealing with this. It's replacement. Replacement. If I have a cup of juice in this hand, and I have a cup of water in this hand, and I start filling this cup with water, and all the juice starts flowing out, soon if I keep filling it with water, guess what? This cup is going to be water too. It's replacement. Replacement. Our minds can get to stinking thinking, right? Our thinking can get so wrapped up into negative things. Doubts can fill our minds. The enemy can feed us lies. And we'll start thinking all those things. And, and so it's here in this cup. But with Jesus and God's word, if we're filling our minds with that, then that's what's going to replace all those negative thoughts. So that stinking thinking can be out with replacing it with God's word.
and filling our minds with the promises of God. So replacement, you identify those doubts, then you replace it with the promises of God. So you replace it, and then if you don't know what verses to go to, ask somebody. Ask somebody to help you find promises that will go against those doubts that you have. And then you'll fight with God's word. You'll fight the enemy when he feeds you those lies and doubts. You'll fight it with the promises of God. But you may not know all the promises of God. Well, that's why we have others to help us, you know, to to help us say, hey, I'm fighting this doubt. Will you help me find a promise that I can just replace that negative thought? Ask somebody to help. Here's the problem, though. If we don't read God's word, we won't know how to fight. So you have to read the word to fight with the word. And so it's important for us to be reading scripture uh, daily. We, we need to feed ourselves. And so those negative doubts can, can go away. It's really a problem with trust. When you doubt, you're not trusting the truth. We have to understand if we know the truth and the truth is God's word and the God's word is hidden in our heart, then we can help fight the enemy's lies. So let's move to verse 30. This is an amazing part because John just takes this part and he shares why he's even writing the gospel of John. Verse 30, Jesus performed many other signs in front of his disciples. They're not written down in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. If you believe this, watch this promise, if you believe this, you will have life because you belong to him. Do you understand? If you believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, it promises here you will have life because you belong to him. So third point here is motivation. First thing you got to do is identify those doubts. Second, you need to replace those doubts with the truth of God's word. Thirdly, why? Why replace these doubts with the truth of God's word? Well, your motivation should be to please the Lord, to love and obey the Lord. Thomas was told by Jesus, stop doubting and believe. It's a command. We need to stop doubting. If we're a child of God, if we're a Christian, if we're saved by grace through faith, we should not doubt the truth of God's word and who he is. And so we have a promise to fight back with. We can tell the enemy, hey, enemy, guess what? The Bible says, if I believe Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah, I know I'm going to have life with him. When we doubt our salvation, like, oh, Lord, am I really saved? you know what? You can go back and say, I know Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. So I I don't have to have any doubts because I'm going to have life. The Bible tells me that. And so that's how you fight the enemy. He's been doing this since the garden. What What was the first words from the enemy to Adam and Eve? Did God really say you couldn't eat from the tree in the garden? What was he doing there? He was trying to get them to doubt what God truly said. And he, and you know, we're going to read scripture and read scripture. And guess what? The enemy is still going to try and feed us lies and to try and get us to doubt God's word. So be ready for this. Identify where your doubts are. Replace it with the truth of his word. Why? Because you want to love and obey what Jesus says to us. He's telling us, stop doubting and believe. Believe that God can do the impossible. God can do impossible things. So I want us to understand something really important from Matthew chapter 6. We talked about how... Our motivation should be to love and obey the Lord because it's a command. Well, Jesus in Matthew chapter 6 commands us, don't worry. Worry is doubting, okay? Worry is a part of doubt. So Matthew 6, take a second and, and turn over. If you need to pause right here, 
pause the video, turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Okay, so we're at Matthew 6, verse 25. Listen to what Jesus tells people here. I tell you, do not worry. That's a command, right? Don't worry. So we need to understand he is serious. It's not try not to worry about things. It's don't worry. Okay? So he says, I tell you, do not worry. Don't worry about your life and what you will eat or drink. Don't worry about your body and what you will wear. Isn't there more to life than eating? Aren't there more important things for the body than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't plant or gather crops. They don't put away crops in the storerooms. But your Father who is in heaven feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Can you add even one hour to your life by worrying? And why do you worry about your clothes? See how the wildflowers grow? They don't work or make clothing. But here is what I tell you. Not even Solomon in all his royal robes was dressed like one of these flowers. If that is how God dresses the wild grass, won't he dress you even better? Your faith is so small. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Jesus looks at us and says, your faith is so small. After all, the grass is here only today. Tomorrow it's thrown into the fire. So don't worry. Don't say what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear. People who are ungodly run after all those things. Your Father who is in heaven knows that you need them. But put God's kingdom first. Do what he wants you to do. Then all these things will be given to you. So don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This right here, we can take and use and fight the enemy and, and tell ourselves, look, I don't need to worry. The central idea for today is that Thomas believed because he saw Jesus. The challenge to us is, will you believe who Jesus is even if you don't see him? Will you choose to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? That's faith. Faith is believing without seeing. You know, we put faith in things every day. You know, this chair that I'm sitting in, I didn't come up to the chair and examine every part of the chair to see if it would hold me up. Did I? No. I have seen so many people sit in chairs and get up out of chairs to know enough that I can sit in the chair. I remember a story one time, this actually happened. We were sitting around um, in all these chairs and, um, and I was with Jen's family. And so um, you guys know uh, Dick and Nancy Powell maybe. And it, it was Jen's brothers and, and their families. And we're all sitting around having a good time. And I'm sitting in this chair and all of a sudden, <laughs> I broke the chair. <laughs> I was embarrassed. I was like, oh, no, I just broke this chair. Well, did I examine that chair and every part of it to make sure it would hold me? Of course not. I just had faith and trust that the chair would hold me. Guess what? Sometimes things in this world will let us down, right? People in this world will let us down. But our faith and trust should be in Jesus, the one who will never let us down. Yeah, we will go through hard things. That's why the Bible says the testing of our faith produces perseverance. We will go through hard times. But if our faith doesn't waver, the, the, our trust is in the Lord. The Lord is more powerful than anything on this earth. And so do we put our faith and trust in the things of this world? No, that's what the ungodly people do. 
So I don't know about you, but I'm going to continue to trust the Lord and not waver in my faith. Though things may get difficult, things may get rough, I'm going to hold on to the anchor, the one that truly will hold me, no matter what. Thomas, I told you, went all the way to India. Doubting Thomas became believer Thomas. And when he went and told all those people in India, some of the people didn't like it. And there in India, he was killed for what he believed. Oh, he wasn't a doubter after this moment. The moment Jesus looked him in the eyes and said, stop doubting. Thomas looked at him and said, my Lord and my God. Will you do that? Will you turn and share with the Lord? You are my God. That's the question for each of us today. If you are a believer in Jesus already, will you choose to stop listening to the lies of the enemy and choose to stop doubting and actually follow the command of the Lord to say, stop doubting. Believe. Believe. So, What will you do today? Identify the source of where your doubts come in. Then second, replace them with the truth and the promises of God. And if you don't have promises to fight back with, ask somebody. Tell them the ways you doubt and they'll find a place in scripture that you can share God's word out loud. You can say these verses and you can fight the enemy and his lies. Third, remember your motivation. It's to love and obey Jesus. So take some time right now. Share with others. If you're watching this and you have some people with you, share. What are some of the doubts that come into your life? It could be doubts about God. It could be doubts about Jesus actually saying he was the Savior of the world. It could be about some things happening in your life right now? Where are you getting most fearful or afraid? Doubts that come in. Share what the truth of God's word is. Share some of the promises that you've read in the scripture. These can help motivate us. And so I I pray that you would take some time to share with others. Maybe it's your family right now together. And, and just take time to talk with one another about how the enemy is talking to you and how you want to shut him out. And so I, let, let's pray and finish. And I encourage you, next Sunday, I'm praying that we can get back together uh, in the building. But if not, we'll do another video. But I'm telling you, this is probably my favorite chapter in all of the Bible. John chapter 21. If you've not read that chapter, I pray that you would read it this week to get a head start. Uh, And we're going to discover some amazing things. There's some hidden things in there that I've learned over the years, and I want to share it with you. I'm excited about that. So let's pray, and we'll end today. God, thank you so much, Lord, for the life of Thomas and how he changed from being a doubter to a believer. Lord, I pray that you would help us in our everyday thinking and living, that we would truly obey your commandments to not doubt, not have to worry, but trust you in everything. Lord, give us the verses that we need to fight back with, those promises that you give to us, and help us to remember our motivation to live for you and please you with everything we do. God, uh, we know that doubts will come in, but we know you've given us everything that we need to fight back. So Lord, challenge us this week. We love you and uh, we, we just thank you so much for Jesus. In his name we pray, amen.